Hey everyone, today we are going to be card or tablet weaving on our ankle loom. So I have an ankle loom, I also have the cards which are necessary for card or tablet weaving, and we're gonna be making some shoelaces. And you may be wondering why would I weave shoelaces? And really, why not? If you're not interested in making shoelaces, you can weave any type of band following the same techniques I will show you in this video. I had a previous project on my loom that wasn't turning out. This is because my cards are labeled clockwise and should be facing right, but I warp them facing left. Cards can also be labeled counterclockwise, which mean they should be facing left. I'll link Eloise of Finchingfeld's YouTube channel. She has a ton of ankle weaving information that helped me a lot with this project. To prep for weaving, you should number your cards and mark the starting position of the cards between letters A and D. This will become helpful later. I decided just to use an orange Sharpie to mark that starting position. This will make it really obvious once you've finished a sequence of turns. I also put the movable peg in a position to make the longest warp. Some people will leave a little gap, but I think it's important to have extra room to move the peg as the warp shrinks. I'll be using the Ashford Inklet Loom, which has a max warp of 70 inches. I measured my old shoelaces and they were 48 inches, which is about the max finish length the loom says it can weave. This meant I needed to warp using every peg, but if your project is shorter, you can always use less pegs. Just make sure to account for 10 to 15% shrinkage. The pattern I'm using is by John Malarkey from Spinoff 2020 Winter Edition. I'm using Venn's 22 Pearl Cotton Yarn, which I'll link below. It was really nice to work with and I would definitely use it again. To warp the ankle loom using cards, warp four ends around pegs, holding the bundle of ends in your hand. Then, thread the ends through each card in either the S or Z direction. Your pattern will indicate this at the bottom of the draft. I'm starting off with the Z direction, meaning the threads go right to left through the card. Once a card is warped, tie the ends using a surgeon's knot. Remember that side A and D should be facing upwards after you've finished warping the card. There are parts of the pattern that have every other thread use a different cone of yarn. After watching Eloise's YouTube channel, I learned I can warp two threads at a time, speeding up the process. Halfway through, I switched to the S direction with threads going left to right through the cards. Now that everything is prepped, it's time to weave. Eloise started off leaving a long tail after the first pass, then looping it back through the next shed after the cards I turned. I found this technique really helpful for securing the beginning of the weaving. Your pattern will tell you which way to turn the cards. Forward means to turn the cards away from you, and backwards means to turn the cards towards you. This is a little confusing, but will get better once you're in the groove. To weave, pass the shuttle through the shed, leaving a loop. Turn the cards, 
Beat the weft thread and pull the loop tight. Pass the shuttle through the current shed, leaving a loop. Turn the guards again and beat the weft thread while pulling the loop tight. Repeat this process, turning the cards forwards and backwards according to your pattern. I did have some warp threads that came loose, and I used a pen to create extra tension until I could retie them. Once you're done weaving, leave a larger loop than normal when passing the shuttle through the shed. Turn the cards and beat the warp. Then pass the shuttle through the large loop. Pull the warp thread to secure and do one last turn of the cards. I wanted to make sure the ends were super secure, so I did a zigzag stitch on the ends. I then wet finish the shoelaces as I would for regular weaving. You can finish the shoelaces with packing tape alone or be fancy and get egglets. I wanted to be fancy and went with the egglets. However, I still rolled the ends in packing tape to make sure the shoelace would fit into the egglet. Also, please don't be like me and make sure the egglet fits through the eyelets of your shoes because mine did not fit. I didn't realize this until after they were glued onto my shoelaces. Thankfully, they fit through the eyelets of another shoe, but the laces are a little long now. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned lots about tablet or card weaving and are inspired to start weaving your own bands because I personally really enjoyed this project and I'm actually gonna start a second pair of shoelaces. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when my next video is released.